Halo Infinite's multiplayer beta kind of throws you into the deep end without much explanation of its new weapons, equipment, or multiplayer modes. There's a lot that's not immediately apparent when you start the game. If you fire up multiplayer right on the spot, you'll likely find yourself pretty confused. We've been playing a lot of Halo Infinite over the last few days and have come across all kinds of useful information about how the game works. These tips will help you hit the ring world running, give you a few key strategies for its big modes, and help you become a more effective Spartan teammate. It's tempting to jump right into multiplayer, but before you get going on Halo Infinite, you should scroll down the main menu list to the item marked Academy. This is where you'll learn the ins and outs of Halo Infinite, which includes a quick tutorial. You got this. It's not gonna be easy, but I believe in you. If you're a Halo veteran, most of the tutorial will cover stuff you already know, but it does highlight a few tidbits about some of the new gear in the game, and it gives you a quick bot fight to try some stuff out. More useful for most players will be the Weapon Drills option, which takes you to a shooting range where you can try out every single one of Infinite's guns. In my opinion, this is essential to drastically reducing your learning curve in the game. It'll let you try each gun, including the new ones, and see how it works, the range at which it'll be effective, how fast it can kill enemies, and if it sports an alternate fire mode. Getting a feel for every gun before you head into multiplayer matches makes it much easier to make decisions on the battlefield about which weapon you want to take into any given situation. You'll usually start a match with the MA40AR and the Sidekick Pistol, but as soon as you begin, you can quickly find new guns to swap these out. Primarily, these weapons are found attached to racks on walls, and you can just pluck them from there. Guns don't appear immediately on racks once they've been grabbed, though. They'll take a while to respawn, and you can tell how long you have to wait by checking the blue meter at the top of the rack when you approach it. Stronger guns, Halo Infinite's power weapons, will spawn at specific places scattered around the map. You'll usually see these marked with yellow icons that'll tell you when the next one is due, and you want to work to nab these guns as often as possible. A rocket launcher or gravity hammer in the right hands at the right time can swing a match in your favor, or against you, so make it a priority to control them. Halo Infinite has four kinds of grenades, and in most matches you can carry four grenades at a time, two of one type and two of another. You can switch between your carried grenade types by hitting left on the D-pad on controller or the N key on keyboard. Make a mental note of where each type of grenade appears on the map so you can snag them when you need them. You always want as many grenades as you can carry, as grenades are a great way to either open a fight with an enemy or finish it. The four types of grenades means that each has different use cases, so try to grab the one you need for what you expect to face. Frag grenades, the default, are solid all-around explosives that are good at either knocking out an enemy's shield or finishing off a weakened enemy, but you'll often find that players survive them fairly easily, so huck these with abandon while you're shooting. Plasma grenades are blue and have smaller explosions, but they're sticky. Land one on a player, and it's a guaranteed kill and they're effective for bringing down vehicles. Dynamo grenades bounce around on the ground, dealing electrical damage to the area around them over time, which makes them great for closing off or clearing a specific area. Players who stand near them for a prolonged period will also be killed by them. Finally, spike grenades are designed for damaging infantry in close interior spaces. They do less damage than frags, but they will stick to walls and shoot out spikes that ricochet around to hit opponents again and again. In addition to guns and grenades, you'll also find deployable equipment scattered around the battlefield. These include a grapple hook, deployable cover, a recon sensor that highlights enemies, a thruster that gives you a short range dash, and a repulsor that can bounce things away from you. They're similar to the armor abilities in past Halo games, and each has very specific use cases. The Repulsor, for instance, can stop vehicles cold when they'd normally run you over, or send enemies back when they get too close. The Deployable Cover gives you a shield you can shoot through, but that will briefly stop incoming bullets, and the Dash lets you quickly move in any direction. You should give all the equipment a try, and make sure you always have something equipped. 
Each equipment piece has limited numbers of uses, but in the right circumstances, they can save your life. There are also two kinds of equipment that rank in the same tier as power weapons, the active camo and the overshield. These are highlighted like power weapons on your HUD and usually spawn in the center of the map. You want to grab these as soon as they're available, just like power weapons, because they give a big advantage. The overshield doubles your shield capacity to make you much harder to kill, although it won't recharge like your normal shield, and the active camo renders you all but invisible for a brief period. Grab these, or at the very least, keep them out of the hands of the other team. A little-known feature in Halo Infinite's multiplayer is the AI scan option. Hit the button for it, either Z on keyboard or down D-pad on controller, and you'll send out a scanning pulse around you that can help you identify things on the map. The AI scan will highlight points of interest on your HUD, like weapon racks and empty vehicles. If you're desperate for a gun but don't know where to find one, use your scanner to help point you toward what you need. It won't show you where players are, use the threat sensor equipment for that, but it will highlight everything else that's interactable, including launch pads. Like most current team-based first-person shooters, Halo Infinite sports a ping system, called Mark in the control menu, that lets you highlight locations or enemies on your teammate's HUD. Enemy there. The system isn't as robust as in, say, Apex Legends, but it is a useful nonverbal way to show your allies where the action is, where they can find weapons or vehicles you don't need, or where opposing players are congregating. Marking targets can be very helpful to your team, so spread the intel around. Mark defaults to X on the keyboard and up D-pad on controller. Like power weapons, vehicles are essential to winning a lot of matches in Halo Infinite. They give you a ton of extra mobility and oftentimes firepower. You can use the vehicles themselves as weapons or to get out of a tight spot, and their mounted guns generally cut through Spartans without much trouble. Don't leave vehicles to rust on the field, or worse, to get snagged by the other team. Use them to your advantage. Even if you're not an especially effective killer while driving or riding, any vehicle can help you quickly cross the battlefield, draw enemy attention, and create a little chaos. You can even take them into launch pads and send them flying. A warthog, mongoose, or ghost harassing a group of Spartans means your allies on foot have a better chance of killing them while they're looking at you. Just be sure not to run over your teammates. Conversely, if the enemy is using a vehicle against you, especially airborne ones, you're going to want to deal with them post-haste. A well-piloted banshee or wasp can wallop a team on the ground that isn't looking up to handle it. Most standard small arms will do little damage to most vehicles, although you can usually target their pilots or gunners, but middle tier and power weapons are highly effective in bringing them down. Two of the best guns for dealing with vehicles quickly are the electricity-based ones, the disruptor pistol and shock rifle. A few shots from the disruptor will disable a vehicle, including a banshee or a wasp, sending it falling out of the sky. Fully charged shock rifle shots can do the same. If you're being hassled by vehicles, seek out the lightning weapons. Ordnance incoming! I see them! The enemy carrier! Ammo reserves depleting! Skewer's mine! Ooh, they can't stop you! But don't forget that the Hydra, Skewer, Sentinel Beam, Rocket Launcher, Sniper Rifle, and Plasma Grenade are all effective weapons as well. If a vehicle is giving you a hard time, shoot at it, because every little bit of damage helps. You can also blow off the tires of ground vehicles or the wings of aerial vehicles to deal them extra damage. If you saw the Halo Infinite multiplayer announcement trailer, you know how useful the grapple shot equipment can be. It gives you a grappling hook you can shoot at just about anything, and if you find one, you should use it. The grapple can be used to zip you up to high locations that are great for sniping, and Halo Infinite is much more vertical than is obvious once you start trying to do this. You can also use it to snag weapons or items from the ground around you, allowing you to grab something you need without leaving cover. Even better though, you can use the grapple against opponents. 
Snag another sniper with the grapple and you'll be rocketed toward them with your character automatically hitting them with a melee when you arrive, so don't try to time it yourself. You can also grapple vehicles and automatically board them if they're empty, or automatically hijack them if they're not. Use the grapple to get yourself out of a bind or to quickly get yourself into a fight. It's not just for climbing. Halo Infinite's radar works a little differently than what you might see in other shooters or in past games. In Halo Infinite, you appear on the radar when you're moving, firing, or sprinting, and you don't appear when you stop moving or move while crouching. Being judicious about revealing yourself is essential to sneaking up on opponents and killing them without being spotted, so be careful about when you run or when you choose to engage with enemies. You might also want to play with headphones or your volume turned up, as you can usually hear approaching footsteps when opponents draw near. In some cases in objective games, you'll also be highlighted on the enemy's HUD, but you can take steps to avoid that too. While a flag in CTF or Seed in Stockpile is highlighted on the HUD for players when it isn't being carried, if you pick up one of those objectives, it stops being highlighted. But you will be highlighted for all opponents to see if you're holding an objective and sprinting. You can also be revealed when you're shot while holding an objective, so bear that in mind as well. It's okay to toss an objective in order to engage in a fight, then pick it up again after you've won if the alternative means exposing yourself and getting easily taken down. The stockpile multiplayer mode is likely throwing a lot of players for a loop. Your team needs one more power seed. It's a lot like capture the flag, but there are roughly nine flags on the field in any given moment, and a given team needs to return five of them to their base in order to score a point. Instead of flags though, what you need to claim are power seeds, small battery-like objects that spawn in the middle of the map and are marked on your HUD. Your goal in these matches is to procure seeds while stopping the opposing team from claiming any, but when you pick up a seed, you're unable to fight, much like when you carry the oddball or the flag. The good news is that you can throw seeds, and it's an effective strategy for several players to group up, grab seeds, and huck them toward their base over and over, rather than trying to carry them the whole way. This way, you can keep moving the seeds while still fighting anyone who comes after you. Vehicles are also a good way to get seeds back home. You can't drive while carrying one, but you can hold one as a passenger just like the flag. And with the Razorback, the gunless version of the Warthog, you can actually install two seeds on the back bumper. With players piling into the car carrying seeds, that means you can haul as many as four back to a base with one vehicle. In total control games, your team's goal is to capture and hold three designated spots on the map. On big team maps, your team needs to capture all three locations at the same time to score a point. So when you see your opponents starting to snag that third zone, you might start to panic a little. There's a strategy to apply here though. You can stop the other team from scoring simply by beginning to capture a zone yourself. Points are only scored when one team holds all three zones unopposed. That means that in these scenarios, you shouldn't necessarily scramble for the zone the other team is about to capture, but rather one of the two they already have. If the other team is about to score if they capture point C, you can expect that most of their team is already on it, trying to capture it. That might mean that point A or point B are relatively or completely unguarded. Step onto either of these spots without an opponent to stop you and you'll begin the capture sequence, preventing them from scoring a point. Just be wary that the other team can also use this trick against you, so it's a good idea to leave members of your team on every point, even after you capture it, so they can mount a defense. One infuriating oversight in Halo Infinite is that you seemingly have no ability to mute individual teammates in the game's team chat. If someone leaves their mic on, or if a chatty group joins your quick play match, you might find yourself cringing as you're forced to listen to whatever they have to say, or just as frequently, whatever's happening in the background of the room they're playing in. You can mute individual players, but it's a bit counterintuitive finding the place to do so. Pull up the social menu, either by hitting start on controller or escape on keyboard, and find the roster of players in your match. From there, click their profiles and the opportunity to mute them one by one will be available. You can also shut down team chat wholesale in the settings menu, 
Once you're there, scroll to the bottom of the audio menu. You can toggle off voice chat and text chat in game lobbies and in matches on this screen, although it doesn't seem to be fully effective. Ratcheting down the incoming voice chat volume slider to zero, however, will make it so you never have to hear anyone in a match ever again. For more Halo Infinite coverage, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the GameSpot channel, and check out GameSpot.com for everything Halo Infinite.